Hi, I'm Colby. And I'm Daniel. And this is Colby and Daniel Reviews Movies. So today we are here to talk about a film I'm very excited. Uh, I'm very excited for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Um, this is a brilliant movie starring Michelle Yeoh, uh, Stephanie Hsu, and um, I don't quite know how to say um, Quan He Hui, I think. I probably butchered his name. Um, Kehi Kwan, um, and it's about a woman who is overwhelmed in her with her business and her family life, who feels like she just missed the chance to make something of herself, and is greeted by a mysterious multiverse version of her husband, who says that she is the person who can save the whole multiverse from a great evil, and that she's the only one who can do it. And so in saving the universe, she also has to confront her fears and her own insecurities and fix the bonds within her own family uh, in order to confront the, the problems facing the multiverse. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Whew, uh, first impressions. Um, this is just it's just such a great year for movies. We've been talking about this yeah. recently. Um, no, I, I love this movie so much. This I, it's rare for me to f like actually cry in a movie theater, and so this this one really got to me. Um, basically, what is really impressive to me about this movie is the way that it deals with what is kind of a heady topic: the idea that like. Nothing means anything because everything is just everything is just you know, random like quantum mechanical wobbles, and that the world could be different in any possible way, and that there's no there's no particular reason why things are the way they are, and then it overcomes that, but it overcomes that by grounding the story in such a in such a clear emotional reality that they can do all this crazy stuff like having a black hole bagel or having um having a raccoon a raccoon uh ratatouille or um you know uh eating chapstick uh or doing um like kung fu with the fanny pack and all of these crazy crazy things don't feel like it doesn't feel like you're just watching um I don't know what's a good example. It doesn't feel like you're just watching Monty Python or something because the emotional, the, the, the conflict and the tension are so real that all that other, all of the craziness, it, it just works. It just, you're there for it. It doesn't, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like, um, it doesn't feel like it's, it's jumping the shark because the emotional reality is there so they can go really crazy in the sort of the fantasy like the multiverse stuff um yeah sorry i can talk about this movie forever but um what did you think of it i think my uh my main impression i think was that michelle Yeoh is uh is a star and i'm excited for whether obviously she's famous for other things but like she's we're, famous we've been, what, we've, but she's not famous enough yeah we've been missing out on on other movies that she should be Absolutely. she should be leading in I um, could not agree with you I thought I thought it was really interesting. I read it uh, an interview where um, apparently Jackie Chan was the first uh, the idea. Uh, initially, she, Jackie Chan was going to play the husband, and he was going to be like the lead. They kind of like switched uh, the characters a bit, um, and I think he would have been great. But I'm really glad we got we got this universe. <laughs> yeah, um, no, it's and I'm excited for whatever she. Um, does next and um no it's it's yeah. fun to think about that so so the other thing other casting um change that they made was aquafina was going to play the daughter but instead they went with um stephanie shu because of a like a because of a conflict in scheduling basically and so just thinking it would have been a really difficult it would still have been a good movie but it would have been a very different movie with jackie chan and aquafina <laughs> than yeah, with sure. uh michelle Yeoh and stephanie shu Especially because then we wouldn't also have gotten 
uh, Kehi Kwan, who, I want to, I'm really sorry, that's not how you pronounce his name. Um, that, that casting worked out very well because I feel like he can play up his kind of like, they, they can play up this like dorkiness and he's also not an international world celebrity in the well, way that Jackie Chan is. And you know, like whatever Jackie Chan's role is, like you know that he's going to do awesome like martial arts and stuff. Uh, and so I feel like it created a really powerful scene when there's like the, the fanny pack scene that he pulls off. Um, it's quite original he, as a fight scene. It's quite cool, but it's also like unexpected in, in that way. In a way yeah. like, probably if you're like in the know, it's probably not any slash. Right. Bit, but, but given that he was a stunt director, I think you can be forgiven, especially if you just watch American movies. Yeah. I don't think very many people would know who he is. You really should know who Michelle Yeoh is if you're a big fan of movies, but honestly, she's not in that many. But um, I, th- I, th- I think also too, he does he does a really good job. I feel like his job uh, is quite difficult too because he's two quite different, uh, like the, the the different uh, versions. Yeah, are quite different, and he has to kind of highlight that contrast. And I think he does a really good job um, in that role. So, so just to I explain, think, I think uh, like their dynamic particularly, like they really nailed the casting for those two and. Again, this is another movie with other great supporting casts. Um, I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis is phenomenal uh, in her role. Yeah. And super funny in her, her role. Yeah, no, no, that's no. right. Um, everyone, everyone who has a speaking line basically uh, does a does an excellent job. I, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change any. And the, of the, 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 gran- the grandfather is great and like so like subtle too as well. So like yeah, uh, and and he's ninety six years old. James yeah, Hong, well, uh, really. Brings a really, lot of energy really to old. It. No, yeah, he's he's very impressive. Um, um, yeah. So, so just to explain a little bit, basically, well, so I, I guess all I have to say is that uh, I liked the like uh, the scenes where they're like d- doing like martial arts and stuff, and I like a lot of the like kind of like more experimental parts of the film, but fundamentally, I think the most interesting scenes when they're acting because the actors are so good and so like all that stuff is i think is cool but i don't know i think a lot i you know, I, I i really enjoyed the movie uh it's like but there's a lot of cool effects and stuff but i think the best part is is the actors and the scenes no i i completely agree i guess i feel like this movie kind of reminds me of a link later movie but it's like an yeah. awesome absurd action movie yeah instead of like Instead of, you know, just like a dream where they're having lots of conversations, it feels like definitely that yeah. plus it's, action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, no, I, I agree. There, um, there's definitely comparing it to like Waking Life or something. Yeah, no, it feels um, like Waking Life, but, but, but also more I just want to be clear. organized and stuff. Yeah, more organized and the action is is good. It's not just... Right, this is another thing because we've, we've watched a lot of Marvel movies in the last few years and one thing oh, we've both become the, the, the action is so much better than yeah that. we've got like it can be <laughs> kind of tiring just but. seeing lots of like punching and like especially if this was something in Doctor Strange where like the fight scenes I just well, yeah. most of them I didn't really like basically I only like the fight scenes in those ones that are the creative like the Sam Raimi ones you know where he's like yeah, yeah, using yeah. musical right. instruments or there's some there's some constraint that makes it interesting whereas these because it's it's not like it's it is circus kung fu or whatever like it is staged and you can clearly yeah, see yeah. that, but it's a lot more visually interesting. Um, yeah, the constraints that they use. So, that, like we keep mentioning it, uh, at one point he he basically beats up like three security guards with a fanny pack, and uh, because he's like, they go really hard on the dorkiness for this this husband guy. Like he's putting googly eyes on stuff. He's like dancing with the old man at the karaoke machine. Like he goes really hard for the dorkiness, and then he just pulls out really really impressive kung fu um yeah it's where so he's cool. he's he puts like rocks in his fanny pack and he's like swinging it around and like taking people out it's very yeah. impressive and if, at least if you come in not knowing who he is it's completely unexpected um which is is excellent um yeah yeah so that that is the action is really strong because it's it's michelle Yeoh and uh kahi kwan are, are both it's just impeccable. Yeah, right, like, right. <laughs> they're yeah, yeah, they're yeah, just yeah. impeccable action. They're, like Michelle Yeoh is incredible. I mean, she's been an incredible action right, star for also, decades. Also, the the, the two um, other, um, uh, I, I I don't know. They're they're like security guard people that like they end up fighting, but oh, yeah, they're, they're also very like skilled. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. The security. So 
Right, and it's just it's just it's just a lot of fun. But yeah, honest. yeah, the the it's a great sense of humor. The movie as well. Yeah, which I think is quite helpful for dealing with um, all the nihilism. I think. Well, yeah, I think another thing that I think is interesting is that, yeah, the movie isn't really about the multiverse at all. And I'm not sure if that's partially because there's not really anything to say about the multiverse or like, uh, like it's fundamentally, it's like a family story. And so like that can sound cheesy in a way, but it also can be quite like uh real i guess as well yeah i think it's both a family story and a personal like a person like both like a a man versus man kind of story or woman versus woman yeah story um like it's very much about her own personal journey but also very much about her family like she both has to like overcome her own insecurities and her own doubts and also communicate with her daughter and th those are both essential elements and it would not be nearly as good of a movie without either one of those. So it's, it's, it's very much because it is so you never lose sight of that. You never lose sight of the fact that fundamentally this woman wants to make something of her life and is worried that she hasn't. You never, you're always there. You're always there. Yeah. So when she's doing crazy stuff and she does a lot of crazy stuff in the movie, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like stupid. It feels like intense. It feels like she cares so much that she's going to do crazy stuff. So the, the basic plot device is that, the um you can th there's a multiverse and you can jump between them by thinking really hard about this like if you made a different life decision and then also like a little bit of hitchhiker's yeah. guide to the galaxy you have to do something really unlikely and somehow the unlikeliness of doing it catapults you to this other multiverse it's cheesy but that's not important because it's not a sci-fi movie it's like an emotional family movie um, um but that framing that there that device lets you do really funny things like um right so i, f I feel like they they uh this is not necessarily like a criticism or anyway but just as far as like how you deal with the multiverse i feel like it's primarily used for like humor um as well as maybe kind of the the basic like setup for it but like uh, yeah so there's a perfectly good interpretation i think potentially the one i would prefer for this movie that none of the multiverse stuff is actually real and that this is actually a fairly mundane day in the life of this family but she's going through a lot of inner emotional turmoil and it feels like she has to beat up security guards and all these things that, yeah that's a perfectly it, it's not like dr strange where like this is very much clearly I, I the think world it's definitely very interesting that we have two multiverse movies uh hitting at the same time that are very different in a lot of ways obviously if you are going to see one multiverse movie definitely make it this movie uh, uh, this movie is definitely much more uh, interesting in, in a lot of respects. But I do find, no I do find it interesting movie. this movie the, is just that good. The way that... Because kind of the issue with, with multiverse, right, is that first, why do you have it? And so kind of the whenever there's a multiverse, the issue is that the universes are colliding and they're all going to explode or something like that is kind of what happens every time. Right, Somehow, it wouldn't be good if the universes are perfectly safe... And they're not going to collide. You're not going to... There are other multiverses, but you won't yeah. interact with them. It's just boring. Right. Or you're right. You'll just hop over into this other one. Uh... Right. And if it doesn't have any consequences in your regular world, then it's just... It's just not that... Sorry. This is, this is my fundamental theory that we've been yeah. going off is that I think multiverses are... They seem like this big invention in fiction, but they're really not because we already have fiction. <laughs> so the idea that like things could be different we already have that so there i i think multiverses are fundamentally introspective because the only reason to have a multiverse is to explore right. How, what if your, your life would have turned out yeah but to have your characters explore that like self-conscious because you can already do what if just by fiction so it's yeah. it's fiction for your fiction but without like you know it's less clunky than maybe having your characters write a book right um no, but it's, it's interesting, though, that, um, like, you could have made a way darker version of this movie that isn't necessarily good or better or anything like that, but the, the way that um, um, Wayman and Evelyn are kind of in love across universes, and that she kind of falls, she's more attracted to Wayman in other universes, even though kind of the end is that 
the Wayman in her universe is like those other Waymans, is strong, is masculine in these ways, in his kind of kind, hard way. Um, versus, it doesn't explore her falling in love with all these other people. Right, right, um, r- right. So you could have made a different movie that explored that, but like, right, there's all these other, all these other but multiverse I, but women. But that, see, the, the issue is that any of, the, all those other movies are bagels movies. You go into the bagel. And so this is the <laughs> right. only one where you, like, right. this is the only one where you just keep your own life and you make it good because you can't go to some other no, life and just live that life. Yeah, no, this, that, that's exactly what it is. So, so the, the thing is, there's all these other universes that are different, but they're not actually different because this is not actually a movie about, like, it, it grapples with the problem. Like, the problem is if you just consider that, if you, if you, you can't live like that. You can't live just constantly thinking about all of the options that could be. And so even when you're thinking about the options that could be, she's only thinking about like, do I marry women or do I not? But she's not thinking about like the 10,000 other guys she can marry or billions. Like she's not thinking about that. And, and like, right. Like exactly. If you do that, then you go into the bagel and that that's exactly what the movie is fighting against doing. And like, this is why, I don't know, this is why I think some of the stuff, like, Rick and Morty tries to do some of the stuff, but Rick and Morty definitely goes into the bagel, and they, they're very, yeah. they're very proud, and there's a place for that, but, like, I think this movie, and, you know, way Doctor Strange grapples with some of the same ideas, just much more indirectly, and much, more much, indirectly, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so because it's so much less directly, the, when they deal with it, it doesn't feel quite as much of a payoff, but because it's grapples right with the nihilism it really gets right in there when yeah. they overcome it it feels so satisfying like it, it feels so yeah good it's, it's much more yeah it, it's much more direct and, and focus on that yeah um so i was just to some of the things to actually just to stick on wayman a bit this is a really great acting piece. Like, this was, like, uh, so he's a really good actor, but, like, this script is, a, like, not just for him, for him and for Michelle Yeoh. These are such a good script to show off your skills. And yeah. then the fact that they got skilled actors to then show off their skills yeah, I mean, is, were, like, great. Wrong. Because it, he, he, it starts out, and you see him as just, like, nerdy and kind of, like, effeminate and weak. And... She's like talking about how her husband is like, oh, I have no idea how like he'd survive without me. Um, and then you find out he's always, <laughs> to get personal, kind of reminds me of our dad in some ways because he's like goofing off and he starts just like talking with, uh, you know, with the, the IRS manager and trying to like solve things. And then you see the different versions of this guy and she is really intrigued by him because in these other universes he's much more like proactive and he seems like he's because he's he's like trying to to get her he's trying to like tell her all about the dangers of the multiverse and yeah. then he's like doing kung fu and, and she she perceives him as it's right that she is helping him but then in the universe where she's a big time celebrity movie star he is as well and so like she for like the initially she's she's in that universe thinking that like oh my gosh if i hadn't if i hadn't uh gone uh to the u.s and like got this stupid washing machine uh store like instead i could be this huge movie star um back in china and then like well he could have too so the idea that she's holding him back isn't something that he wanted yeah no right that that scene specifically is like just to well, uh, yeah, to take a uh, yeah, sorry, to take a little moment to diverge. Uh, go watch *In the Mood for Love*. It's one of the best yeah. movies ever, all time. Uh, yeah. Um, anyway, the 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 scene, the scene where they're they're both like movie star people. They it's, they do a really it looks, great. It's like a reenactment. They so, yeah, they steal insane. they steal the color palette and the vibe from *In the Mood yeah. for Love*, and it's just beautiful. It's so well done, and it's yeah, uh, it's just like a standalone great scene. It's it's I mean. I'm sure Tarantino is. Uh, I'm sure Tarantino was applauding. Um, yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so she sees she sees her husband as really as much more like interesting and attractive because she sees him as like a completely like, different person. But then, then she sees that he in when when they don't end up together, he's also quite successful. 
Yeah. And then he gets to this like monologue about how like actually he is also a fighter. He just tries to see the best in people, not because he's naive, but because that's how he fights. Yeah. And then when she goes back to her regular universe, she also sees like her husband um is trying to protect her when when her, you know, cuz she she like faints at one point. Her husband's trying to protect her and then when she's ready to like fight, he like throws himself in harm's way to try and tell everyone to like stop fighting. And he's actually quite brave. And she realizes that these are all like her husband is actually Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually a like a strong, interesting person. And right. and isn't weak. He just deals with life differently. Uh oh, sorry, the other key thing is you find out that he um he Twice, he manages to talk to the IRS manager uh, and who's giving her a hugely difficult time. And he manages to convince her to like give them extra time so that they can um, sort out their, their taxes because they, they didn't file them properly for something. Uh, and she has no idea how this could happen. That he, because he doesn't take... He makes the IRS uh, person cookies and he like... Yeah. He... He approaches the problem from such a completely different thing that he's able to get results that she just is not able to do. And so then she realizes that her husband, who looks like lame and weak and stuff, is actually a really interesting, talented person. Yeah. And I guess I felt like it was really powerful because I just playing didn't like the character at first. And I just completely went along with well, the, I think, the I think viewpoint that, from that, that's that's Evelyn's. part of the part of the why the title of the film is so great is that um evelyn's character at the beginning right feels like like everything everywhere all at once that she has all these problems all happening all, all at the same time she has to deal with all of them and uh that's what it feels like but it's not accurate though she doesn't actually see everything right um, Right, but the and fact so, that it, it, but that so so like the, there's like the the setup for that scene is like um, when Waylon is like uh, or Wayman is like, hey, wh what's on your mind? And then the part one comes up, everything, everything's not on her mind, right? But she perceives it that way, but she's not thinking about um, his feelings or their daughter's feelings, and so I think that is like an interesting like she's able to see his abilities by seeing like literally everything right um yeah yeah so i just but, yeah i and the fact that it can i mean i don't know this is like something like 500 days or something the fact that when when a movie gets you to maybe colby didn't make this but when a movie gets you to make the same mistake that the character the main character is making I just, I think there's a certain lovely trickery about I thought, that. I thought he was sweet and nice and oh. clearly helping out. No, I, yeah, well, some people are nicer. I, 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 I thought she was horrid to him at the beginning. <laughs> no, I, I thought she was totally justified at the beginning. Uh, so, um, yeah, no, I, he, he's definitely, like, not the main character, but he's, it's such a great role. Uh, and then... Uh, another great. Sorry, I feel like we're not even giving Michelle. Yeah. Michelle Yeoh is just so good at the role that it's honestly like hard she's to say so anything. Cool. She just yeah. She's just she's like, like but, just a badass. She just uh, she looks like, but whenever she's doing all of her action, she just looks extremely. She's been doing this for decades. She's really her yeah. action is really so, so good that I don't have anything to say about it. It's just perfect. Yeah, uh, right. But then her acting is much. I guess I just feel like that's it's like. I didn't necessarily know that she was also great at acting yeah. when it, there was no action to do. And the answer yeah. is yes. Yes, she's really good at it. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's she's very stressed about her father coming back because uh, basically her father kind of uh, cut her, her off. Like, used her as a failure, yeah. Yeah, her father, her father is very dismissive of her and she doesn't want to say that uh, her daughter is, is gay so she's like trying to like sidestep the issue and uh i think that there's a real i don't know it's not like the most progressive movie it's like not like a super 
it doesn't it's not like it's not super centering this issue about the fact that she doesn't want to acknowledge like she's just kind of homophobic not not very much but just like a little bit and it doesn't it doesn't it's not like a, the central thing in the movie but it is acknowledged and i think it is a, a real i think it is well done the fact that her character she clearly loves her daughter but also wants her to conform not necessarily for some reason not like she's like disgusted by this but she wants to i feel like in part because she wants to like impress her, her father and gain she definitely wants she to. wants to gain this respect and then she also can't give that same she starts repeating the mistakes that happened to her she 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 can't give her daughter approval and you see in the beginning uh her daughter basically is upset uh because you know um because her mother introduced her her girlfriend as just like her her good friend yeah and so she's gonna drive off and then um michelle Yeoh runs after her and looks like she's gonna be like i still love you or something and she says you're getting fat which at least my understanding is that is something that is very much what a person in that situation might actually say and <laughs> like uh it really i don't know i think that that failure at the beginning and then when you put in the like like the climax of the movie um where she has this big speech about how they shouldn't like she her daughter is getting fat and she is aimless and she doesn't like tattoos and all this but at the end of the day she still wants to be wherever her daughter is and she can't explain it and that's where yeah. she wants to be it just hits different. It's, it's it's a really it's a really powerful film. Because it's a powerful because they have uh, because they they give you a lot of the pain at the beginning. Then the end just feels so good because you you've had a lot of you've seen it go bad, and so seeing it go well is just the costuming is also really fun. It's hard to say much about this because I don't know that much about costumes, and it was just really good, but. They have a lot of fun with the costuming, and I thought uh, Stephanie Hsu's character, uh, Joy, uh, I thought she was well written and well acted for like a, a sort of over the top supervillain, but then as like only part of the personality of a, you know, struggling Gen Z woman, uh, and part of what makes her really fun and over the top is she gets to wear these outrageous dresses, which are just really fun to look at. Like uh, at one point she's like, got like, it's like, looks like she's like dressed as like a virus or something. And then the point she's like, yeah, a she, cool, she has a lot of fun costumes. cool clown. And then, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to add about this. Uh, just go see this movie while it's still in theaters. It's, it's definitely, definitely one yeah. to see on the big screen as well. Um, yeah, it's definitely a cool movie. And I hope, I hope all of these actors go on to do a lot more things, but especially Michelle Yeoh. Um, I really, really hope that she gets some blockbusters because uh, she's really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, thank you for watching. Yeah, thanks.